Interleukin-1, also called IL-1, is an important cytokine, or signaling molecule, involved in the inflammatory response. IL-1 regulates processes like fever, vasodilation, leukocyte extravasation, and osteoclast activation. In this mnemonic video, we'll cover all the important functions of IL-1. First, take a look at our cowboy. There's a lot to tell you about his story, but I want to first highlight the interlocking guns that he's pointing up towards the sky. Interlocking objects are our recurring symbol for interleukins, a type of signaling molecule used by the immune system. And since guns are our recurring rhyme for the number one, these interlocking guns mean that we're dealing with interleukin-1. Get it? Interlocking guns for interleukin-1. They're the interleukin-1 interlocking guns. Next, take a look at this cage. Our cowboy, the most wanted man in the West, was imprisoned in this cage-like jail by the local sheriff. This cage is our recurring symbol for macrophage. Get it? A cage for macrophage? Or macro cage? It's the macrophage cage. Little did our sheriff know that no jail has been able to cage our cowboy with the interlocking guns for long. With his gunslinging skills, he made easy work of the guards and broke out of jail. And now he's got his guns interlocked over his head in triumph, almost as if he's taunting his captors. This cowboy escaping this cage represents how IL-1 is secreted by macrophages. Because he came right out of a macro cage, right? After escaping his cage, our cowboy took typical Western-style revenge on the people that threw him in the cage by burning down the town. Our cowboy's predilection for pyromania is no coincidence either. The flames all around represent our recurring symbol for the inflammatory response. Get it? Fire? Or flames for inflammation? You bet this town is inflamed. For context, IL-1, along with interleukin-6 and tumor necrosis factor alpha, is released in almost all causes of acute inflammation. Again, inflammation is an innate immune response meant to make the body less friendly to invading bugs. Let's break down the inflammatory response and all the ways IL-1 contribute to it. IL-1 increases capillary permeability which allows signaling molecules and other white blood cells to move from the blood vessels into the affected tissues. In addition, IL-1 causes vasodilation, increasing overall blood flow, and therefore, white blood cell delivery to the inflamed area. Lastly, IL-1 increases activation of the endothelium to express adhesion molecules, which allows white blood cells to bind to the endothelium a crucial step in their eventual extravasation out of the vessel to the target tissue. All of the above manifests clinically as warmth, redness, swelling, and pain, called the cardinal features of inflammation. Functionally, these inflammatory effects help white blood cells enter affected tissue sites, which obviously works to protect us from infection. Next, take a look at the sweat rolling off our protagonist's face. We are in the desert, after all. Can't imagine all those flames are helping either. All this heat should remind you that IL-1 causes fever. In other words, IL-1 is a pyrogen, since the fancy name for things that cause fever is pyrogen. The word pyro is actually Greek for fire. For example, think of words pyromaniac or pyrotechnic. In addition, words that end in gin tend to be the producers of something. Think of the word generate. So, combining pyro and gin, we get fever producer, a pyrogen. To cause fever, IL-1 first travels to the brain, where it enters cells and leads to the production of prostaglandin E2, or PGE2, from arachidonic acid. PGE2 then travels to the anterior hypothalamus, where it increases our body's set point for temperature, causing fever. This is a lot of detail. So just remember, IL-1 causes fever, and you'll be set for most questions on test day. Next, take a look at the bones underneath the cowboy's feet. Looks like the skeletal remains of dead cattle. Aren't there always decayed bones in western movie deserts? And cowboys love to just crush them into the ground. These decayed bones represent the fact that IL-1 promotes osteoclast activation, 
which leads to bone resorption. On top of the fact that these bones are naturally withering away, this cowboy is also actively crushing or destroying the bones, which should again help you remember how osteoclast activation causes removal or resorption of bone. Before the interleukins were named, IL-1 was actually called osteoclast activation factor. Given IL-1's ability to activate osteoclasts and therefore stimulate bone resorption, IL-1 overexpression can lead to osteopenia and bone lesions. There are a couple important clinical implications. First, IL-1 overexpression in chronic diseases can lead to weakening of bone called osteopenia. Second, cancer cells can release IL-1, generating lytic lesions in bone. Some cancer cells metastasize to the bone, where they create osteolytic lesions, whereas others do it from afar, like multiple myeloma. But in either case, IL-1 plays an important role. Alright, that's it for IL-1. Let's summarize. Interleukin-1, or IL-1 for short, is a cytokine primarily produced by macrophages that plays a major role in acute inflammation. By promoting vasodilation, increased capillary permeability, and activation of endothelial cells, IL-1 helps white blood cells get to the sites of inflammation. IL-1 also indirectly acts on the hypothalamus to cause fever. Lastly, IL-1 promotes bone resorption via osteoclast activation, which plays an important role in the pathogenesis of osteolytic lesions in cancer. Okay, now we're actually done. That may be our last encounter with our cowboy and his interleukin-1 interlocking guns, but we have a lot of other interleukins to discuss. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. For more videos like this one, click here to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also support our team by visiting pixarize.com, where you'll find exclusive videos and interactive review images. If you like what we're doing, share with your friends on social media, and we'll keep making great content like this. We'll see you next time.